Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Rashad Raihan, and we're going to talk about Hadoop. And the question that's probably top of mind for some people is, what the heck is Hadoop? <laughs> yeah, um, it, it's great. It's, it's uh, in, in one sentence, what, what Hadoop is, is essentially an open source framework to analyze any type of data at scale. So there's three key words in that statement, right? Open source. Um, obviously that means cost efficiencies, right? But at the same time it also means it's a nascent environment, an ecosystem. It's it's starting to grow and it's it's just exploding. Um, especially we're, we're seeing you know use cases across verticals. So that's that's really interesting to see. Um, the the second keyword is any type of data. I think that's really the value out of Hadoop. The, the point that you're able to take any type of unstructured data. Think of video or music or text or you know website data um, and you're also able to take structured data typically something you'd put into a database or a data warehouse and you're able to kind of you know develop a, a data sync some people use that word data sync um, so you, you kind of have this this catch all for all of your data that you wouldn't necessarily want to have inside of your BI systems where typically the data goes through a very strict ETL uh, process to, to make sure that it's it's cleansed and it's in the structure that your, your systems recognize. Uh, the third keyword in that statement was scale, right? So that's where um, the, the way Hadoop works with uh, the, the Hadoop distributed file system as well as MapReduce framework, which essentially allows you to scale seamlessly uh, in a heterogeneous environment with commodity servers. So you could have servers from multiple vendors or uh, multiple types of servers from one vendor and just keep adding servers on the go and HDFS and MapReduce essentially take care of all of that. So essentially, it's, a, uh, it's an analytics platform. Um, there's lots of use cases, so I don't want to straightjacket it in to saying it's it's uh, essentially meant for a you know low cost ETL type of uh, platform. It's an um, uh, you know you you just want to do certain types of analytics. This brings up a good uh, kind of a good segue into what what kinds of things are are people using Hadoop for? Yeah, so we're we're seeing uh, you know interesting use cases all the time. The most common one that we're seeing right now is. Most people are in the in the state where you know I kind of know what Hadoop is. I think it's really cool. It's really interesting. Um, I, I want to start off with a little pilot project, um, and then we'll see where this goes. Um, most people are using it for again low cost ETL type of processing, which essentially means I want to be able to ingest all this data that's coming into my organization, whether it's social media, whether it's click stream data, for instance, um, whether it's uh, different types of unstructured data, and I want to see how all of this unstructured data kind of works together. Think about fraud detection. Think about uh, risk modeling in the financial sector, for instance, right? Um, and, and then I don't want to load up all of this data because big data by nature is large. The three Vs as we have talked about before, right? So the, it, it's, it's large. A lot of times it, it can tend to be sparse, as as well, and it's it's unstructured, uh, uh, you know, uh, and therefore you don't want to load it as is into your warehouses. So you need this kind of ETL platform, extract, transform, load platform, where you're refining the data before you actually suck it up into your your warehousing. So that's kind of the I would say the most uh, mainstream use case that we're seeing Hadoop for. But we're also seeing a lot of people uh, run analytics right on top of Hadoop. There's a whole ecosystem, you know, you have a hive and edge base, and a, it, there's a whole zoo of uh, animals. Um, Around around the the core Hadoop system that essentially makes this much more usable um, to developers today. So, for instance, you've got um, folks that are developing SQL interfaces where you can run SQL queries right into Hadoop, right? So, something that you're used to uh, working with, and you can use uh, you know a technology that you're not used to. So, what kind of pain points are there in this this whole Hadoop world? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. So, kind of going back to you know when I define Hadoop about you know it's 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 nascent, it's it's open source. It's mainly been fueled um, so far mainly by you know technology enthusiasts and startups, right? Um, and and there's 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 I think 2012 is kind of the inflection point where we're going to see a lot more mainstream adoption. Now the growth is great. It's good news and bad news because uh, it's it's bad news because the skills really haven't kept pace with um, the growth of Hadoop. So there's a lot of organizations going, I need Hadoop people, I just don't know where to find them. Hadoop expertise is, is, is scarce. Um, and when I say Hadoop expertise, I mean people who know how to run uh, and write MapReduce jobs for Hadoop, and also people who can do the platform engineering to figure out what kinds of uh, decisions do I need to take at an infrastructure level to make sure that I'm running 
it on a balanced uh, system that can scale easily, that meets the, the needs of all the users that are using my um, Hadoop cluster. So there's pain points around both the kind of the Hadoop platform uh, layer as well as the infrastructure layer. That kind of speaks to, though, um, I'm going to get a, just a little bit off track, but that kind of speaks to the idea that um, really there aren't that many people out there who have worked with really big data problems to date. Exactly, and, and it's kind of interesting. I'm, I'm seeing new roles appear every day. There's, you know, data data science is such a burgeoning um, a field, and, and there's there's new roles even within uh, data science. So you're right, um, and and that's the goal um, of the solution that, that we are offering, essentially, to let the data scientists worry about the data because there's enough uh, enough of a, uh, I'd say a, a problem area where you need expertise just just focused on the on the data layer and let us worry about the platform layer right so uh, there's there's certainly pain points in, in the data data area as well uh, but the pain points that we're um, you know going after essentially are you know we want to be able to help customers deploy um, Hadoop clusters quickly um, and you know with a low cost of acquisition but also to be able to scale and, and kind of evolve as their demands uh, grow. So what else do you want people to know about Hadoop? Yeah, so um, you know, at this conference, HP Discover 2012, um, we announced a number of solutions. Um, we announced a, a HP App System for Hadoop, um, uh, as well, which is a factory integrated uh, system, as well as three reference architectures. So essentially, we have an open strategy with the three leading um, Hadoop distribution vendors: um, Cloudera, uh, Mapper, and Hortonworks. Um, and these solutions uh, essentially reflect the expertise and experience that we have with large computing pro projects. You know, I mean, you know, Hadoop is definitely a new technology, but the notion of large scale-out computing projects on commodity servers, that's been around a while. In fact, we have software, uh, cluster management utility, for instance, that's been around for more than a decade that has been managing some of the largest scale-out deployments for, you know, like I said, more than a decade. So we're not new to this, and we're bringing all that experience into the, the way that our re reference architectures and our factory integrated solutions are, um, are built. In addition to that, we have services. So, um, you know, as, as we've talked about before, it's one thing to uh, deploy a solution, but there's a lot of hand-holding that needs to be done, especially as people are in this kind of one-on-one -on -one stage with Hadoop. They're trying to figure out what it is, what they can get out of it, how to write MapReduce jobs, how to turn business problems into Hadoop solutions, right? So we kind of handhold them through that uh, with a roadmap service for Hadoop, and also we have a big data strategy workshop, which is a much kind of broader, it looks at all the different sources of data in your organization and tries to build that platform for big data across your organization, and that's a three-day workshop. So there's you know, services, solutions, as well as a factory integrated solution. So really, HP is kind of giving a whole a Hadoop package. It is, and and if you think about the the, the announcements that we've had here at uh, at Discover, uh, you know, Vertica's uh, 6.0 came out. They have something called Flex Store, which essentially allows you to analyze any information anywhere, right, in in any form. Uh, they also have, of course, very deep integration into Hadoop. They've they've all already had uh, Hadoop connectors for a while, and they're offering deeper integration now, where essentially you can run Vertica natively um, inside your Hadoop cluster. Autonomy again has uh, their new I engine where, idle 10, where you can essentially take the engine, just plop it in into your Hadoop clusters and run meaning-based um, uh, computing. What I mean by that is, you know, think about the word Apple, you know, the fruit versus the company. That's sort of a, a, a you know, computation you can do uh, inside of Hadoop as well. So, um, you know, Autonomy also announced uh, their Optimus Clickstream Analytics. So that's kind of focused on one use case uh, in this whole area. So again, you know, we're all about building a big data platform across the enterprise that takes care of unstructured data, structured data, that allows you to, uh, to manage, and understand, and act on 100% of your data. And HP really is the only vendor that's able to do that today. All right, well thanks Rashad. Thanks Jake.